Hey guys, um, just wanted to share something with you. Um, after decades of having sort of gastrointestinal problems, looks as though I finally found the answer. And it was SIBO or SIBO, as some people call it, small intestine bacterial overgrowth. I have an article here that I'll tell you a few points. Um, and some of the medication that I've been on for the last few days. I hope this helps somebody out there. Um, basically what happens is your small intestine is only supposed to have a small amount of bacteria in there, if any at all, things like lactobacillus, but um, you know, it, for many different reasons, it could be antibiotics, it could be proton pump inhibitors, you know, like to treat um, stomach reflux. It could be an actual functional problem. You can get bacterial, small intestine bacterial overgrowth or SIBO. Um, I definitely was on proton pump inhibitors. In fact, I've still got some here. Um, this was Pariot that I was taking. Now, um, some of the critical things from this article, which is called uninvited guests, the impact of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth on nutritional status by Oren Zadel and Henry C. Lin. Henry C. Lin. Um, some of the points I'll pull out for you are the bacterial flora may compete with the host for critical nutrients. They'll alter host metabolism directly damage the absorptive mucosa of the host, in other words, your, your gut lining in your small intestine, and produce gastrointestinal symptoms that reduce or alter food intake by the host. Um, some people's small intestine is actually sterile, so they don't have any bacteria in there, and that's normal as well. 33%. How is this diagnosed? It's diagnosed by a lactulose hydrogen, hydrogen breath test, and that's what I did to finally find out what was wrong. So you go into a pathology office, in my case, or there's home kits apparently, and you blow into a bag um, every half an hour for several hours, and what happens is there might be no hydrogen come out first, or detectable, depending on your own problems um, and then it just peaks right up so that's exactly what happened in my case so that's how I was diagnosed with SIBO or SIBO um, another thing that can cause it is narcotic pain medication so I was on very strong pain medication because of my shoulder problems and um, my humerus problems which I won't go into um, SIBO may even con uh, cause edema by malabsorption of protein, I found out. So this is, it's not in this article, but that's something interesting because I have edema at the moment and could be actually from chemo, but it actually could be from SIBO because there's reduced, uh, decreased amino acid and peptide uptake, according to this article. You may get uh, protein losing enteropathy. So uh, an inability to to jet to assimilate and digest protein properly, that can lead to edema or swelling. You know, fluid retention. Also, there's fat mal maldigestion and malabsorption. So, for example, a dead giveaway is floating stools. If you look down, and you have a bowel movement, and the stool floats. That's fat. That can be fat malabsorption. Um, there's also malabsorption of fat soluble vitamins if you're not absorbing the fat properly a d and e deficiencies are possible and b12 deficiency is also possible some people with i'll call it SIBO because it looks right to me that's how i would pronounce it or SIBO i heard it pronounced but anyway i'll call it SIBO in contrast, it says here, some people with SIBO report an intense preference for sweets, which may lead to weight gain. You know, I was, I'm in an RN and there's several videos that I've done that possibly I had Candida, 
Well, I mean, the symptoms are the same when it comes to gastrointestinal symptoms. And um, it turns out that it's more than likely SIBO that was causing this problem. Um, in some people, because of the um, vitamin deficiencies and diarrhea and bloating and all that, it can cause weight loss. Okay? Obviously, it didn't happen in my case. I wish it had happened. It can also um, interfere with your ability to lose weight because if you're not getting the nutrients that your body needs, you can be constantly hungry. You'll see it. I've done some videos where I've said I'm constantly hungry. Um, what can happen is the, the bacteria will ferment this stuff, your food, the carbohydrates mainly, and cause hydrogen, can cause methane. These things can damage the little microvilli in your small intestine, which apparently is the size of a tennis court if you were to open it all out and that leads to malabsorption once again of nutrients. So in conclusion, um, I'll read this whole section. With the high degree of suspicion and the use of lactulose breath test, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth can be readily identified as a contributing factor for the patient's gastrointestinal symptoms and malnutrition. Eradicating SIBO will lead not just to dramatic improvements in symptoms, but will correct the multifaceted adverse effect of bacterial growth on nutrition. I'll just add something else in there. Um, your immune system, 60% of it I heard, is through your small intestine. So your small intestine helps produce your immune system so that's really important and the, one of the most important things is way back oh i'm talking around 12 years ago or so i was diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome and a lot of people that have SIBO actually were diagnosed with ibs but it's not ibs it's SIBO. So have a, have a test. Go and get a test done for yourself. Go and get the hydrogen breath test. And what I found was the most helpful, I, I had the fructose test first, which is fruit sugar, which to my amazement came up as negative. But then I had the lactulose, lactulose test. And that caused me so many gastrointestinal problems on site at the pathology office that it wasn't funny. And I said, I hope that this is clinically significant. And it was. So there you go. I hope that's helped somebody out there. I'm on, oh, I almost forgot. I'm on these. Zyfaxan. So I'm on 1200 milligrams once. Uh, I'm taking two tablets a day. In total, it's 1200 milligrams. And the um, antibiotic is called... Rifaximin. Um, yes, it says they're 550 milligrams, so I'm taking two a day, and then I take I've cut a little bit more. I've asked the pharmacist if that was all right, and so I've cut a little bit more. Um, now, in my country, here's the bad news, and probably in America as well. In my country, it wasn't on the pharmaceutical benefit scheme, the PBS. It was $685 for this packet. I'm not kidding you. Um, now look, if it solves all these gastrointestinal problems that I've had, it's going to be worth it. And I wouldn't be surprised if this stuff can contribute to cancer. Now have a little think about it. If your immune system is as we say in this country, bug it up. So if it's not working properly, that means that cancer can overgrow, can't it? Because your immune system keeps cancer in check. So this is really interesting. I would love to see studies done whether this SIBO can, can contribute or cause or not hold back cancer. Um, yeah, that'd be an interesting study. All right. Um, 
I'll catch you later. Do your research as always. And uh, I hope this has helped somebody out there. Have good health, guys. I'll see you later. I have to turn the camera off like this.